verify ready for launch. FTS. FTS go. Prop. Prop. Go. ABI. ABI go. Good morning and welcome to SpaceX's live launch coverage of the Space Development Agency's Tranche 1 mission. The Falcon 9 rocket on your screen is currently awaiting liftoff from Space Launch Complex 4E or Slick 4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California just about four minutes from now. Hello everyone, my name is Tucker Spencer Wallace and I'm a mission integration engineer here at SpaceX. The Tranche 1 space vehicles launching today will serve a part of the Space Development Agency's proliferated warfighter space architecture, a new layered network of satellites in low Earth orbit. Both the range and vehicle are currently green, and we are on track for an on-time liftoff at 7.12 a.m. Pacific time. Weather continues to look good for today's launch out of California, with a 0% possibility of violation. If needed, a backup opportunity is available tomorrow, starting at 7.04 a.m. Pacific time. As a note, we will not be showing any Stage 2 or payload deployment views at the request of our customer. Falcon 9 is part of our Falcon fleet, which has completed 540 missions, and Falcon 9 recently completed its 500th mission overall in July and has already flown more than 100 missions this year. This past weekend, Falcon 9 completed its 500th landing overall. As you may have just heard, the Transporter Erector, or TE, has begun retracting from Falcon 9. That's the large trust structure you can see standing next to the rocket, and it's hinged at the base and connected to the launch mount beneath the first stage. As you've just stage one lock float is complete. As you've just seen, the clamps around the second stage have opened, and the TE has retracted from the first stage. You may also hear it called the Strongback, which is the same structure, just a different name. The TE rolls Falcon 9 out to the pad, raises it vertical, and stays connected through the final seconds. It provides fuel, power, telemetry, and command connections between the ground systems and the rocket. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup. This means the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. Just inside of T minus two seconds, we will light the M1D engines for liftoff. The payload continues to be healthy, and, and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. With the weather still looking green and the range ready to support our T0 of 7.12 a.m. Pacific time. And with that, we're going to proceed into the final moments before liftoff. Stage two lock load is complete. And with that, the liquid oxygen for the second stage is now fully loaded, completing propellant load for the upper stage. You've probably noticed white clouds venting from the rocket at this point. That isn't smoke, it's actually condensation. And as the liquid oxygen warms slightly inside of those tanks, some of it boils off, which is then vented to Ground manage pressure. Ground gas closeouts. We just heard the call out that gas closeout has started, and that refers to venting and closing out gaseous systems, such as topping off tanks and sealing vents to maintain pressure. Standing by now for, for confirmation that Falcon 9 is in startup at the T minus one minute mark. Falcon 9 is in startup. As you just heard, the Falcon 9 is in startup, which means that at this point, the autonomous flight computers have taken over the launch countdown, and stages one and two are pressurizing for launch. This is the mission director. Go for launch. 
And there you just heard the mission director give the final go. So let's sit back and listen to the final countdown. T minus three seconds. T-minus 15 seconds. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. And liftoff of Falcon 9. Go SpaceX, go SBA. Vehicle is pitching downrange. And when do chamber pressure nominal? At T plus 30 seconds and counting, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Slick 4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. In case you're just joining us, this is the Space Development Agency's Tranche 1 mission and we had an on-time liftoff today at 7.12 a.m. Pacific time. Nominal. Coming up next, the vehicle will be passing through max Q, which is the point in the mission profile where the vehicle, vehicle is supersonic. Where the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of aerodynamic pressure. Max Q. Falcon 9 has now passed through the period of max Q, when the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of aerodynamic stress. Coming up next, we'll have several events happening in quick succession, starting with MECO, followed by Stage Step and SES-1. Main engine cutoff, or MECO, is where all nine Merlin 1D engines will shut down to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation, which is where the, finals, the first stage separates from the second stage. Following this, the MVAC, engines on, MVAC engine on the second stage will light, which is called out as SES-1, or second engine start one. This engine burn, lasting several minutes, will propel the second stage and the payload to orbit. In addition to these major events, the fairing halves will separate about 30 seconds after SES-1. As a reminder, we will not have any Falcon 9 second stage or payload views at the request of our customer. We're about 10 seconds away from Miko now. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. And back startup. And as you just heard and saw, that series of back-to-back -back call outs there, which again were MECO, stage separation, and SES-1. Coming up shortly, we should hear a call out for fairing separation, but as a reminder, we will not be showing it on screen. Both payload fairing halves supporting today's mission are also flight proven, with both halves flying for their third time. Bearing separation confirmed. And there you just heard that confirmation. We will be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves again today once they fall back to Earth with our recovery vessel, Go Beyond. We are currently at 3 minutes and 48 seconds into today's mission. Now the next major milestone coming up in about three minutes from now will be the entry burn of the Falcon 9 booster as it continues on its journey towards our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, stationed in the Pacific. To start the entry burn, we will relight three M1D engines, which is similar to pumping the brakes to slow down the vehicle as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We need to slow down the vehicle to reduce reentry forces, 
which then helps us to recover and reuse the first stage. Now let's talk a little bit about the payload, even though we can't show it to you today. As an integral part of the US Space Force, the SDA is launching the proliferated warfighter space architecture into low Earth orbit to enhance warfighting responsiveness, resilience, and survivability. SDA is delivering next generation capability to the joint warfighter in support of terrestrial missions through development, fielding, and operation of this network. SDA's mesh, mesh network of optically connected satellites is primarily focused on tactical data delivery to the warfighter at the edge, tracking and targeting advanced missile threats, and beyond line of sight targeting for time sensitive or mobile targets. The Tranche 1 launch today is delivering into orbit 21 data transport satellites provided by York Space Systems for the data transport layer of the proliferated warfighter space architecture. These 21 satellites form the first of 10 satellite planes that make up the first tranche of warfighter capability in the SDA's proliferated warfare space architecture. Coming up in just a few seconds, we'll be working towards the entry burn. We are now 30 seconds away from the beginning of the entry burn. You should see the graphics light up as the engines do on the bottom of your screen. As I was mentioning earlier, each space vehicle on this launch is configured with four optical communication terminals for satellite to satellite and satellite to ground laser communications and two mission data communication payloads for Link 16 and KA band radio frequency receive and transmit capabilities. Stage one entry burn startup. Stage one FTS has saved. And there's that call out for the entry burn startup of the Falcon 9 first stage. This burn is set to last about 26 seconds and again is slowing down the vehicle in preparation for its final burn and landing. Stage one entry burn shutdown. And there's the call out for entry burn shutdown, the completion of the Falcon 9 first stage entry burn. Coming up next will be the first stage landing burn, which will start a little over a minute from now. The Tranche 1 satellites launched today will be operated from two SDA space operations centers, one in Grand Forks Air Force Base, North Dakota, and the other at Redstone Arsenal in Alabama. These will also be supported by a global network of ground entry points. Coming up next, we'll have the landing stage burn one transonic. of the first stage. The landing burn is the final burn of the Falcon 9 booster used to reduce the remaining speed of the vehicle for a gentle and precise landing on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. Stage 2 terminal guidance. We should hear that call out for the first stage landing burn moments from now. Stage 2 FTS has saved. Stage one landing burn. And we heard the call out for landing burn start on the Falcon 9 first stage. This is the final burn that this booster will see before landing. I'm back shut down. Stage one landing leg deploy. And another, Stage one landing confirmed. and another successful landing of our Falcon 9 rocket, the sixth launch and landing for this first stage. As a reminder, we will not be showing any Stage 2 or deployment views at the request of nominal our customer. Orbit insertion. As you just heard, a good call out there for Stage 2's nominal in orbit insertion. And with that and the successful landing of our Falcon 9 booster, we will be bringing our webcast to a close. We'd like to thank the Space Development Agency for entrusting us with today's mission, and we'd also like to thank the Range and the FAA for their support. 
If you're interested in more launch coverage, be sure to check SpaceX.com slash launches and follow at SpaceX on X for the most up-to-date information. When you're there, check out our new departure board, featuring our upcoming launches with details such as mission name, launch and landing site, and liftoff time. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you again soon.